come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Hey, do us a favor, wherever you find us, go on over and uh, give us a like or hit that subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other folks like you who appreciate what we do here. No, you're discerning connoisseurs of strange and unusual cinema and podcasts about you yourself are strange and unusual. <laughs> <laughs> um, Very true. Yeah, so who are these internet radio superstars? Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight <laughs> we watched a movie that was chosen by. Colin! Colin. Where did our movie come from tonight? It came from beyond. Sure. Oh. There you go. <laughs> See what we did there? Yeah. Nice. I think well done, from... boys. Not even playing. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Off the cuff. Yeah. From Beyond, 1986 was the year. Directed by, uh, directed by Stuart Gordon. How many times have we had him on the show? From? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. Because, uh, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where you don't really plan it, but somehow Stuart Gordon has been covered on our show. We've done a lot of his movies. Uh, mm-hmm. We did uh, Reanimator. Uh, we did Robot Jocks. He was Robot Castle Jocks. Freak? Is Castle Freak? Castle Freak is, is uh, one of his. Um, yeah. Oh, is that it? And then this, and then from beyond. I thought we did something else, but maybe I am We've mistaken. Done. Maybe it was a Brian Yisna. Yeah, because there's some, yeah, because that's what, yeah. Or Charles there's Band, crossover there. like Arena or something like that. Because Stuart Gordon, um, you know, I mean, he, uh, he well. But we lost recently, right? Last year, this year? I believe it was last year, yeah. Last year? Yeah. I mean, he's an interesting guy. I think we talked about him a little bit before on one of those other episodes. He uh, hails from Chicago. He was a theater director, formed something called the Organic Theater. He did a bunch of David Mamet plays, uh, I think is what he kind of got famous for, um, you know, on the the uh, on the, the play scene or whatever, theater scene in Chicago. And then he went Hollywood, and his choice of movie to do was uh, Reanimator. Um because uh you know either he or somebody that you know his theater pals they were uh aficionados of the work of hp lovecraft um and so they made uh an updating of uh, the story herbert west reanimator and that became like this huge breakout um gross out um cult hit of 1985 um that was a movie that was released um, unrated. I think it was like that was kind of what made it notorious. I remember the ads playing on TV, you know, uh, you know, this movie is uh, not rated um, and uh, has some just completely gross out moments and shock yeah. effects and stuff like that that you will remember, remember for the rest of your life if you've seen that movie. And so this was the follow up. This was commissioned as the follow up. Basically, um, you know, if you do something good, you know, that's successful in a genre, everybody says, well, what are you going to do next? And so he thought, he thought that the, uh, the natural follow-up to a HP Lovecraft story was let's do another one. And I think originally he wanted to do shadow over Innsmouth, which is one of my favorite HP Lovecraft movies. So, I mean, I remember the, the, um, the full moon when he was working for Charles band, uh, I remember the ad that they had, you know, saying that Shadow Over Innsmouth was coming and then they never produced it. And uh, yeah. ultimately he was able to do it um, many years later with <laughs> Brian Yuzna, uh in Spain and it was called Dagon. So I think, uh, uh, um, you know, fr- well, so basically his H.P. Lovecraft uh, adaptations uh, was Reanimator, From Beyond, uh, Castle Freak, uh, and Dagon, the feature film ones, and they also did uh, Dreams in the Witch House as an episode of the Showtime series Masters of Horror. Um, so he's basically become the 20th century's, you know, he was the 20th century's like H.P. Lovecraft adapter. Although 
I, you know, these are loose. He's the Mick Garris of H.P. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What Mick Garris was for Stephen King in the, in the 80s and in the 90s, right? Yeah. Stuart Gordon was for H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. But I mean, Stuart Gordon, you know, he went on and he did other stuff. He got out of the horror genre eventually. Um, his last several movies, I mean, they had some critical acclaim. Uh, Stuck, you ever seen Stuck with Stephen Ray? Based on a no. true story about a woman who hit a homeless guy on her way home from work and he got stuck in the windshield of her car. And so instead of going to the cops or anything, she drove home, parked the car in the driveway or in the garage. I remember the story. Yeah. Yeah. It's got Mina Sovari and uh, Stephen Ray. He did a movie right. called Edmund. I believe that has. Um, uh, oh, God. Can't remember the guy's name. The actor. Oh, man. Uh, Jesus, Colin. I know. This is a brain uh, fart. Quick, while you're while you're thinking, quick fact check. Uh, Stuart Gordon actually died this year, and it's it's easy to forget because it was right when time stopped mattering. It was in March. So. Oh shit! Oh. Was it this year? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah it was That's... this year. Well, you yeah. know what? Bless the man for not having to live through this fucking nightmare of a year. Yeah, for real. Good for him. You know, he got out <laughs> before it got really bad. Well, we're hitting the reset yeah. button on that, right? Uh, we had a full moon on Halloween and, uh, you know, time shifted and all that other stuff. Uh, William H. Macy was the guy I was thinking of. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I also forgot that Joel Schumacher passed this year, too. Was that this year? Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, you're going to, the Oscars, if they have them, will have a long uh, in memoriam. Did they do, or they haven't done Stuart Gordon yet? It's going to just be an in memoriam because there's not going to be any music <laughs> awards. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they'll forget all about Stuart Gordon, I'm sure, because the Oscars don't t- tend to, uh, you know, remember the. They forget everybody. From the horror they forgot genre. Luke Perry, and he was in a movie that was nominated. Right? Yeah. yeah. His last movie was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and they fucking left him out of the in memoriam. Good job. Yeah. Um. So yeah, from from beyond. This is uh. How many how many of you have seen this before? This is Never. my first time. Yeah, I have. This is uh one of those '80s practical effects uh, upchuck movies. It's a yuck yuck movie. It's a gross out yes, movie. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, I think that's the thing about Stuart Gordon. Uh, true or false assessment? The guy's a pervert who, uh, you know, just likes to go way over the top. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because that's the thing. Like, so the original story uh, from Beyond, right, was like written in 1920. It was published, I think, for the first time in 1934. It's basically the. Uh, that's not even accurate, but it's basically the uh, the pre-title scene of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> right that's it so the the whole rest of the movie the plot here is uh an invention of uh gordon uh, Stu, uh um dennis paoli and i think brian yuzna yeah right came up with this whole thing mm-hmm. and it's kind of crack uh you guys like your mad scientist movies i mean is this like a a, a genre that you're into i mean it's de- i mean it depends sometimes it can be fun like i thought uh Frankenhooker was a fun mad scientist time. <laughs> oh, I enjoy that one a lot. <laughs> that's, I think that's the thing I like about them is that they're usually fun and goofy and don't take themselves too seriously, and that's what makes yeah. them very endearing, you know? Yeah. And did you think this yeah. one was... Uh, it's running itself! <laughs> <laughs> I well, mean, from right there, I was just like, okay. But it's I not... Hope, uh, I hope Jeffrey Combs plays it that way for the rest of the movie. <laughs> but it... it, it, it like I don't the contrast I guess between this one and Reanimator. Reanimator is like a dark, like black comedy, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. sick humor. Right? Is yeah. uh, is the name? Yeah, of the I name don't of care that. for the humor in that movie. I, really I don't, don't either, to be honest. Yeah. I think it's because they. I think it's because of what they do to the cat. Well, and I'll, I'll, the I'll women that. in that movie yeah. too. Yeah, I'm well, just. Putting, I mean, I'm just, that's that's I'm, for yeah. Every I'm gonna Stuart put it out, Gordon. Yeah, I'm going to put it out there. I don't like Reanimator. I actually don't either. I actually, I, don't. I like when it comes to Stuart Gordon movies, I, I'm going to watch this one over Reanimator for sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, I was trying. I, under, I, I understand its um, impact and why it's a, got, it's a cult classic, but it's not my cup of tea. You don't have to like it. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to figure while we were watching this tonight, I'm sitting there going like, man, which one of these is the better movie? I mean, obviously Reanimator is the one that made the bigger splash. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, 
even even now, I suppose if you watch Reanimator, it's like it's you know it, it's cranked to eleven, right? <laughs> the whole thing, yeah. but this one's trying. Yeah, I would say near the end of this, this one's going there. It goes, yeah, all the way, all the way outside the box into like, holy, what the fuck? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Would this make a good double feature with the color out of space? The new uh, uh, Richard Stanley H.P. Lovecraft adaptation. Have you seen this? I haven't seen not it. seen it. I haven't oh. seen it. No, it, I it, would say it's a good double feature with the '80s Blob. Yeah, I think it's too I, much. I think when you go to double features, it feels like there's. Too much yuckiness in two movies would be too much. What? Two pink, pink, gooey, blobby things killing people. It seems perfect to me. Yeah, I would have got to, it out in one movie. I, I would say you'd have to watch this and then the blob. This would have to play first. The blob would be a good chaser for this movie. That's, that's what sure. I mean, yeah, for sure. Color out of space, I mention it only because um, it seems like Stanley is using the color palette of this movie. Um, that kind of, what is it? It's like, uh, magenta and, uh, what would be like the shade of red that you had going on here? It's, um, Ruby, maybe pink, you know, uh, some kind know. of like neon it's, it's yeah. purple. Yeah. Uh, it's like, a violet, it's like a violet red. There we go. Um, this is to, you know, so th- to symbolize the, the field created this like otherworldly thing created by so, well, let's yeah do we start let, let's back up like how do we we come in right away meeting um jeffrey combs right in the middle of an experiment so like it you was, said that cold open a, it was a good open yeah it's you right get in, right in, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. which is very nice yeah his <clears> name is uh introduced. crawford tillingast which you will remember from our episode on the haunted palace where uh i think uh that story the case of charles dexter ward came first uh and Lovecraft then he reused that surname, Tillingast. Uh, I don't think the characters are supposed to be related. Um, but he's a scientist working with a Dr. Edward Pretorius. That name uh, have any kind of significance for anybody in the room? No, I've heard it before, and it's because of you. Dr. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Pretorius is the uh, name of the guy who shows up in The Bride of Frankenstein who wants to create... Uh- the Bride of Frankenstein, Dr. Yeah. Pretorius. I was like, I know that name, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Yeah, so this is a character that doesn't exist, obviously, in the Lovecraft story. He's invented completely for um, the movie. Um, but these guys are conducting an experiment with a, a device that they've created called the Resonator. The Resonator uh, is a big, you know, it's a whatever, a cylindrical machine with a glowing ball on top that uh, tunes, it stimulates the pineal gland uh, in it's your brain. Like, it's got like four tuning forks. Yeah, you need tuning up forks. on the top of it. You need tuning forks. Yeah, and, and a whole room full of gigantic computers with a bunch of Y'all. switches. You switches. Have- got to flip those switches. That's how, see, that's what's wrong with America today. Everyone, the scientists <laughs> were smarter back in the day because not only did they have to know how to do the science, they had to remember what every one of those fucking buttons did. Those were smart people. More than that, I think they actually are soldering the components on. They know how to build it from uh, circuit boards. Yeah, mm. yeah, you got to build the whole thing. Well, I mean, you know, the guys now probably do too. The tinkerers and their garages, they're building their time machines. That's right. We saw a primer. Um, I think that's Colin's <laughs> next project. To tell you the truth, <laughs> Colin fixes the house and then builds the time machine. Builds the time machine. It's on the list. <laughs> Uh, but the, uh, the resonator, so what it does, okay. I kept what? thinking of the interocitor from Mystery Science 3000. Well, why don't you tell us what the resonator does? What does this machine accomplish by stimulating the pineal gland? Um, it makes you see eels floating through the, the, um, the sky. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You do sound crazy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, these are so, but <laughs> fucking eels. where'd the eels come from? <laughs> Holly? Eels let's, let's delve. Let's delve. Where did the eels come from? Yeah. What in your psychology? From beyond. Colin. <laughs> ah, okay. For what, what is the from beyond? What are, what are we talking about here? I don't know. Wasn't it? It, it like opens your third eye and allows you to see in other dimensions and allows that the things in other dimensions to see you as well. Yes. I, okay. I've read. I've read the child's version of this story. (laughs) (laughs) This is a sci-fi author, uh, William Slater, who wrote a book called The Boy Who Reversed Himself. 
It's about a kid who could go into the fourth dimension, but he had to be very careful because there were things and beings and shit in there that would eat you and kill you if they saw you Mm -hmm. as you were going through it. Ripped off from H.P. Yeah, Lovecraft. Yeah, seems, seems like it. Yeah. I see that. Now. But also, I, you're, I like how he was getting like tidbits of H.P. Lovecraft out there mm-hmm. in the kids' books. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing about. It. I mean, that's I guess why I like. I'm a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft because his influence in horror literature, horror fiction, has. You know, you don't even. There's so many things out there that you don't even know. Kind of comes from a concept that was created back in the 20s by H.P. Lovecraft. You know, I mean, he really was. You know. Uh, there's like Jules Verne and, uh, you know, Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft, uh, you know, coming up with all H.G. Wells coming up with all this wacky shit. And it still permeates our uh, pop culture today. Um, but yeah, so the resonator, it, uh, you know, you, yeah, it exactly as Michaela said, you're able to see into another dimension, but the other dimension can also see you. And uh, while this thing is on, I guess, uh, um, and while you're in the field of influence of it, uh, which I imagine is a big sphere, right? Going out somehow, like radiating out from the, the, the resonator. And if you're within that sphere, uh, you're, you, you know, you, this wall between dimensions is uh, thin and physical. Like you can actually touch these things. They can touch you and uh, bite you. These eels that are floating around in the in the uh sk- in the yeah in the sky in in, in the air right sky eels. So the idea is these creatures are always there and we're passing through them all, all, every day but we can't see them is uh, that why we just have like randomly like you just get a pain in your arm for no reason it's like it's because you pass through the wrong eel the, the sky eel is biting you yeah oh, <laughs> so that's, what you do, that's what i'm gonna do from now on I, like oh uh, you got a pain sky, eel. sky eel oh god damn it <laughs> You know, Colin, there was a very similar concept employed in your favorite movie, Valerian. Yeah, I remember the uh, you put the glasses on. And, yeah, right. It was like a whole society or town that was on a different vibration. They were hiding yeah, in a different it was, vibration. It was a different dimension that you put glasses on and you could see. And then like when he put his hand in the box, he could like go into it. But they, they used it for interdimensional shopping trips for tourists in that movie. Yeah. Much less exciting use. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, they... they practical like because i love shopping so like yeah i want to see what the other dimensions have <laughs> makes sense to me <laughs> well there you go valerian the city of a thousand planets what is it yeah that's the so, title, yeah. Right? yeah yeah valerian and the city of a thousand planets yeah, yeah. Oh, um so uh, anyway so uh pretorius gets his head apparently bitten off like a gingerbread man i love that <laughs> <laughs> and uh crawford yeah, because what else do you bite the head off of yeah that's that gummy sense? bear i know that's the second thing i was thinking but that one if you said that it'd be a little goofy gingerbread oh not gingerbread so man isn't goofy okay. no not so goofy. All right. gummy bear too goofy <laughs> too far. Gummy, gummy bear would be more accurate to the gooiness of this movie though yeah so clearly, there you go. clearly gummies are more goofy than baked goods got it all right I think yes there is a, there is a level of comedy <laughs> <laughs> all right very true well he uh crawford gets um you know of course uh, uh blamed for the murder even though there's no blood on the weapon there's no blood anywhere because once you turn the resonator off all that shit disappears and apparently so does Pretorius's head also. <clears throat> so he gets institutionalized, as you do in an H.P. Lovecraft story. You got to be carted off to the asylum where he meets Dr. Catherine. Was it Michaels or McMichaels? And that's Barbara Crampton. Michaels, I think. Yeah. Um, and Barbara Crampton yeah. actually does believe the idea that, uh, you know, that the, the pineal gland has been stimulated. They give him a CAT scan, I think, right? And they see that it's... Uh, yeah. The, the pineal stalk is growing through the brain, you know. Which are you supposed to be really still for a cat scan? And he's like flailing about. No. Like, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's not how that works. Mm-mm. If you're really still. Yeah. Well, they. Uh, Tell me more about this pineal gland, Colin. <laughs> well, the pineal Clearly gland. Clearly and slowly. Because that's the thing. It's like, is this a, this is like a tumor we're talking about here? But she dismisses it as like, no, this is a you know, it's the, not a tumor. I yeah, this is the the effect. This <laughs> proves that he's not a schizophrenic. There's like a whole subplot, right, where she's a doctor trying to understand schizophrenia. Did they did they uh, mention why they brought her in? I don't know if I got that part. 
because he think she's done this before. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, she, he, she's familiar with familiar from the Beyond Syndrome schizophrenia. Well, some, or, <laughs> schizophrenia, I I think so. And that's oh, for schizophrenia. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right, but she's also known for like that's what it is. Okay. Is she attaching herself to famous cases of schizophrenia? Because that's what it sounds like she's being accused of. Well, they keep calling her the uh, the doctor at the institution, which is played by uh, Carolyn Purdy Gordon. Gordon that's uh, Stuart Gordon's wife. Um, she is like she keeps calling her Wonder Girl. Mm. So the implication being that you know she's uh, you know. Um, savant in the treatment of uh of schizophrenic patients or something like that that she's done some studies but it, it turns out that the doctor's like you know i don't approve of your ethics and how you um you know achieve these results mm. i just like how he he's a uh possibly a schizophrenic and most likely the only suspect in a murder and they're like yeah he can he can leave with you that's fine this is the police. yeah it's yeah like, as long as long as you have Ken Fury with you, <laughs> you're fine. You can go anywhere you, you want. You can take him. You're taking him back yeah. to the crime scene. That's fine. You can do whatever you want at the crime scene. That's fine. I mean, Holly, I, I'd be inclined to agree with you in normal circumstances, but after having watched the most recent season of uh, Unsolved Mysteries and seeing yeah. how they just let prisoners <laughs> go on Christmas shopping trips for fun. That's true. Yeah. Seems pretty accurate. That's very true. You make a good point. Death Row the, lets him go the Christmas 80s, shopping. <laughs> the 80s were wild, man. <laughs> that, yeah well at least they do partner him up with uh you know they do give him a keeper they give him ken foray as uh bubba brownlee he's the top lieutenant for the police force uh former uh football player we know this because he tells us in the first three seconds <laughs> <laughs> and he also wears a football jersey in well, case you forgot you don't yeah. say you're a football <laughs> player when you're introduced if you don't have the jersey on before the movie's over that's chekhov's football player foreshadowing it's it's a rule it's like if you meet someone it's like if you meet someone who's a vegan you will know that's, in the first 10 seconds uh, <laughs> that's the closest colin's gotten to football in years that's uh, absolutely true that's uh, yeah this is it i was like I mean, that's a jersey from what sport thank god he that's, said yeah football at the beginning of it um so <laughs> um so, yeah, so the trio then uh, leave the asylum and go back to the house where all the horror occurred. We haven't seen much of this, right? This was all. We didn't see the thing biting off the head. We know there's a thing that bit off this no. guy's head. And we saw a little bit. I like their uh, earlier before they went into the title sequence, um, how they did it, that shot going across the floor. And then you kind of see his head like gone, but then it fades to black and goes into the title sequence. It's done very well. Yeah. It's I, like, a, I like that it's I like that it's the classic movie trope that it's it's not done in a science lab. It's a crazy science mansion. Yeah, you know? doing the attic. that's only in movies. Crazy science yeah. mansions. Yeah, opens the roof is needs the lightning. <laughs> <laughs> well it's better than that's what I'm saying. Now they just do it in the garage. You know? That's the modern equivalent. It's the suburban and home mansion, and you're, you're doing it in the garage. It's it, it's not an accident that this mansion like looks exactly like the House of the Seven Gables, right? It's very similar. Yeah, I think they're just trying to because I was like, I know they have like the uh, they have the American flag with just the original thirteen. Yeah, yeah. I think they're trying to say this is East Coast. Well, uh, yeah, that the House of the Seven Gables looks exactly like that. It's in Salem, yeah, and that's where Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because this Very movie, similar, uh, yeah. you know, because it was a Charles Band uh, Empire production, means it was shot in uh, Cinecitta, or Dinocetta, the studio that Charles Band bought in uh, Italy. So the whole thing shot in Italy. Um, they're back to it, Italy again. We, we can't get away from Italy. Italy, Italy Italian movies. Uh, entire crew is Italian. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so the, they go back <clears throat> to this place to recreate the uh, the experiment, and um, this is where we find some uh, interesting character uh, information about uh, Doctor Pr- the deceased Doctor Pretorius. He's got a red room. Yeah, oh, this, is, this yeah. is totally where they got Fifty Shades from. This movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Man, Have you seen like the deleted every- scenes for Fifty Shades? Monsters everywhere. <laughs> so I hope someone's keeping a running tally of how many movies we connect back to this movie because it's a lot. 
they all borrowed from everybody saw from beyond that's what it is the, the, yeah um so yeah he's got uh so apparently he had some proclivities to bringing women over and uh he's got the bondage room crawford later you know says that uh he would he always would start with music and wine and always end up with screaming always screaming what do you think of jeffrey combs performance in this I think he's very good. It's what you expect of him. Yeah. Scenery, chewy, spazzy. I think he does it very well, though. Is it he, works in this. Is he playing the opposite of Dr. Herbert West? He's I, he's way more paranoid in this. Dr. West mm-hmm. feels like more confident and more. Yeah. Uh, he feels more like he's a thrust in that movie. In this, for a little bit, um, Jeffrey Combs turns into Professor X, and he's just kind of off its side. Yeah, he's not the, the like plot wildest, driver. The wildest thing. The plot he looks like powder. powder. He, he does. He did. Yeah, later on. That's a good analogy. Yeah, there's a there's a split. Like halfway through the movie, he loses his hair because he gets his head sucked on by this gigantic eel thing. <laughs> he loses his hair. No, 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 don't gloss over it like that. <laughs> what, How dare you? What, 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 what happens? Back up a little bit. Like what? Uh, oh, you want to get there? Is, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, get there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, well, sorry, just a second, college. Holly, I thought he kind of looked like Duddits in Dreamcatcher, but I think <laughs> powder might be a little more accurate. Yeah. Straight up powder. <laughs> and he's got special powers. So I mean, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah, he's a well, yeah. Well, I was gonna if say that, that's that's another tally, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> Linking back powder. Um, <laughs> But I was going to say, Barbara Crampton, even though she's second build in the cast, is actually the main character of this movie, right? Yeah. Because mm. she's the plot driver. She is the Herbert West of this movie. She's the one who becomes obsessed with uh, the resonator uh, in a way that I was kind of like, okay, you know, like, what is her, obs- what, what's the root of her obsession? Because she initially comes in there saying, I'm going to cure schizophrenia, right? <clears throat> and somehow that you know basically she wants she thinks that the pineal gland being enlarged might be the reason why schizophrenics are schizophrenic they're tapped into seeing into uh the other world she has a personal connection because her dad was a schizophrenic or something mm-hmm. like that and he was uh putting in an asylum and they turned him into a vegetable and so she's dedicated her life to uh to uh the study of it um but her obsession is it see the only thing i can think is it's because of exposure to the resonator and the the the, the sensations that it produces that's why she just keeps wanting more of it it feels like it it feels like the you know uh, yeah she has become addicted to it no we've seen that look on the streets colin she's she's <laughs> acting like a junkie yeah, i've seen that look on the streets i mean it's very true um um yeah, she's got the 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 on the outset. She's got the she wants to figure out what it is so she can help schizophrenia. But then, yes, I think you're right. It is the draw the uh, of the resonator, kind of like the leftover effects of it after they switch it off. Well, this is um, but the other the okay the other thing I was thinking about this right. It's like you know, uh, um. Tilling asked, obviously, you know, he doesn't want to be there, right? They kind of take him against his will out there. It's like, you're going to recreate this experiment. She's like, no, 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 we got to turn it on. Even though she knows from the x-ray, right, in the CT scan, that it has enlarged the pituitary, or the pineal gland in his in his brain. And ergo, I would assume that that means it's going to do the same thing to you. And so she's got her and Ken Foray, who really doesn't know what the hell is going on with all this sciencey stuff. And she's like, yeah, let's turn it on. Let's see what happens. And I'm like, aren't you putting these two other people in jeopardy of like some kind of medical, you know, you don't know, long term, like what the (laughs) effects of this is. It seems like there should be more people monitoring this, you know, from the fact that it started out with a murder and a Mm -hmm. guy missing his head. Mm -hmm. You feel like there'd be more of like more attention paid to this if they're going to do this. Yeah. But no, yeah. they throw a caution to the wind and throw the switch on the thing. And so sure enough, there's eels. And then Dr. Pretorius <laughs> himself shows back up again. He's coming. Yeah. Um, this guy, his name is uh, Ted Sorrells, the actor who played him. Um, 
Ted Sorrell, I mean, he was a Hollywood actor. He worked for, you know, many years, but I was looking up some of the stuff that he did. There was not a lot of stuff that I have seen, although he is the nephew of Jack Pierce, uh, the makeup effects guy, and did all the Universal uh, monster movies back in the 30s. Um, nice. But he's got a very intense persona, right? Basically, he's playing the crazy, uh, you know, doctor character from uh, Reanimator, right? Doctor Hill. I mean, this is the analog in this movie. Um, mm. Although he's a sadist, uh, you know, you know, some wacky. I mean, like he's uh, appearing covered in KY jelly at some point, you know, like inviting people to touch him uh, when they do. It's yeah. What <laughs> what what does he say? Touch me if it pleases you, or something yeah, like that. Me. As he's if standing it, there naked in front of you, yes. Yeah. I'm good. No, I'm good. You. Yeah. It's like, uh uh-uh. uh. And then, of course, his face bursts open into a bunch of tentacle things. I thought these effects were kind of cool. This is just what we're getting a little taste of it. He pulls his face off, and then there's like these, these, these uh, tentacles like underneath the flesh that start moving on his face, and then they yeah. all explode out and, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the he turns off his face so you can see the musculature underneath, but then the muscles turn into like little snake tentacles and yeah, like you said, burst out of his face. It feels very I mean, you can say this about all that stuff. It feels very thingish, obviously. Like that's just what it's gonna look like. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, it's cool. I mean, at certain points it definitely reminded me of society. Yeah. 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 I gotta find out. I can't remember who did the special effect. It might have been Mark Showstrom. Showstrom's and uh, well, I mean the this is a who who who's who of eighty special effects guys on this. Mark Showstrom, um, John Carl Beekler, uh, Greg Nicotero was in there. I mean, like they it's like everybody, you know, <laughs> worked on this movie at some point. Um I think Showstrom was the main creature designer. I think I'm not sure who did all did what necessarily. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, like this movie, this is about the jumping off point where the special effects start, you know, coming into the movie before they completely take over into a madcap, uh, ending. But, uh, you know, it's like, I don't know how to describe, um, um, uh, Pretorius's character. He's like, he's physical, but, it's his mind is part of his body and he can reshape his physicality to anything that he wants. So there's always like things bursting out of his head and, you know, big stalks with giant heads on them. And there's, a lot of, there's a lot of protrusions in this movie. Uh, many. <laughs> yeah. And by protrusions, protrusions I mean, of the forehead. Right. But are we supposed to get that that is kind of like, uh, I mean, is there like a sexual analogy? A penis? Yeah, yes. right. Yeah. Because eventually they have pineal glands bursting out of their foreheads and just kind of dangling there. They are always kind of erupt or emerge from the Not head. even just dangling, <laughs> but in close shots with Barbara Crampton, it's almost smacking her in the face. <laughs> it's like doom, wiggles doom, around doom. on its own. It's not just like hanging there. It's moving. No, it's, it's, it's active. Like, yeah, it is active for sure. Yeah. And the movie makes an explicit uh, connection between like the pineal gland also or sorry the uh yeah that's wait is it pineal yep. yeah that's what yep. we're talking about um mm-hmm. it also is connected to the sex drive so everybody in proximity to it becomes uh aroused <laughs> um, and so soon i mean if that's part of it you know bring it on hp lovecraft mm-hmm. like let's mm-hmm. let's get to the end of the world well, well, see, yeah, that's, that's how this mm-hmm. Sean, that, did you not watch the movie? Like, oh, that's right, how it yeah. all started it for all good. of them. Sorry. They were like, I'm "Yeah, sorry. this is awesome," and then it wasn't <laughs> awesome. I forgot that ending. Yeah. yeah, and that's this is Stuart Gordon. This is not part of the H.P. Yeah. Lovecraft thing. I don't think he never really wrote about sex. Sex to H.P. Lovecraft was always uh, unspeakable. There's always unspeakable rights and stuff like that happening. Uh, which you're like, uh, it's so unspeakable. What are we talking about? So I mean, you can fill in the blanks. You know, I mean. But his monsters are ju- generally, uh, you know, um, tentacled things that are slathered with glistening, um, you know, viscous. You, no, I don't want to hear you talk anymore. Please stop doing that. That's, that's, so. There was just there was just dead silence and Colin describing things. Like, well, uh, well but that's, that's what Stuart Gordon's going in for, right? He's like reading yeah. in between the lines here and like just piling it on. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, so they all uh begin to experience weird, you know. Well, I don't know. See, Ken Foray somehow kind of maintains um his sense. It seems yes. like the other two are heavily yeah. influenced by the thing. Uh, why do you think? Uh, I mean, what? You know, well, I don't know. I was going to say, like, what keeps him? Uh, I, I think he doesn't. He doesn't have that strong sense of curiosity. He's there to do a job, and that's all he's there for. Like they get his his mind get, is closed to it. Yeah, he's just like you know. He sees the the danger in the situation. He sees like, okay, there's some shit going on here that we don't know anything about, and we probably shouldn't get involved. And he's he's more practical about the whole thing, whereas they're more like science driven, where they're like, they he's, want the to know. he's the Winston. He's the Winston of Winston. this team. Yeah, we just see him in very small white underwear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forget. Yeah, I forgot that about poor that. man had to fall like, down stairs in small white underwear. Yeah. It's my orange underwear. <laughs> it was and clingy. we see him from that scene like he just we last we saw him fully clothed, then he just tackles dude in orange underwear running around crazy. It's well, wonderful. on the stairs in that. Like I don't want yeah. that stunt work in like the smallest underwear possible. Fuck yeah, they're not, not yeah. boxer briefs. He's like no, in these speedos. are bikini briefs. Yeah. These Those are things never briefs. Come, they never come off. And they get wet and it's clingy. Yeah. I know these are brave <laughs> actors. Brave actors in this movie. I'm saying for the shit that they had to do. True. They're either running around naked or they're getting eaten by something. <laughs> they're always actors. wet. Yeah. They're always it's wet. Very gooey and sticky, and mm. they have yeah. to put their heads in things that are wet. And mm-hmm. it's like, but like when I, I always think about when actors are wet, how many times you have to shoot that scene that they have to go towel off and then get their hair blow dry, dried again and get fresh clothes and start the scene all over. You know, mm. that sucks. Fuck that. Well, I remember yeah. uh, reading in Fangoria, I think, at the time that this came out. I don't think they set, like, a Guinness record or anything, but they had uh, tubs of KY jelly, Ugh. I think, that they were using, uh, <laughs> you know, like, the, when they're in the floor, I think the whole floor of that basement is, uh, you know, covered in K- It's like they're in KY. <laughs> you no, know, that was coming out of their nose for, like, weeks after shooting. Uh. Like they blow their nose and it's just like KY jelly or like finding yeah. it inside your shoes and shit. You know, it's everywhere. Yeah. Or or it's it's in your belly button two weeks later. Yeah. It's like, oh, why is probably. It yeah. Gross. It's a nice gooey, gooey fucking movie. Um the resonator ends up uh uh well okay, so yeah, the the eventually Crawford does get his uh yeah. Um he gets his head sucked on by he got he got attacked by the big thing in the basement right there's a gigantic well, yeah, the, the, worm the switch thing. gets flipped back on by Barbara Crampton it's like I can control it and everyone ends up running into their own kind of little nightmares and Jeffrey Combs runs into like a, a fucking dune worm in the basement yeah which was amazing like amazing like and this it's just. Like, I laughed a lot during these parts because it's just amazing to see like Jeffrey Combs jumping over a big worm to get in the basement and go do all that shit. <laughs> like, it's oh, fun. It, it, didn't, like, it was three a very, feet of jelly. Yeah. yeah it, uh, it was a very dramatic jump when he jumped over. <laughs> 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 right? Yeah. It was like a, it was like a pose. Jump, yeah. Like it, like, it should have had its own freeze frame. It really yeah, should Yeah, it was good. <laughs> That's why you hired Jeffrey Combs. I mean, the guy's an underrated, underappreciated. <laughs> Should have done more stuff. He did do a lot of stuff, I guess, in the, yeah. you know, at Star Trek. Gave him employment True. for 30 years or something as different characters and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so th- there's a transformation for Crawford. I think maybe Crawford, um, the implication being that he had been exposed to the Resonator more times than the rest of them. Right. This is what I'm thinking. The, this is why he uh, eventually why has he the, uh, yeah, the thing that bursts out of it. I love when the doctor later is trying to grab it with the forceps oh. or oh, whatever. God, that was no. So no, not oh. at all. I was just, impressed just with dangling the- around the hole. <laughs> I was impressed with like the how they made that effect happen, but yeah, it was really disgusting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, I, like, I was impressed because it was very effective. Because I was really grossed out, and it was it looked realistic, like it looked very yeah. believable, you know. Yeah, it, and I hated yeah. that every time every time it was about to pop out, it would like it was some blood first. Oh, it was just so <laughs> gross, and the like squish sound effect when it like pushed yeah. through the skin, you know. Ugh. Yeah, if I had an asshole on my forehead, I imagine that's what it would look like. No, that's kind of what it looked like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> 
with a little dog dick that comes out of it. Yeah. Uh, so. A little red rocket. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like this. I don't want like to talk to you anymore. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so he loses his hair, right? And so this is, becomes like a second. <laughs> I love that the, the, yeah, because the, 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 yeah, he gets ends up in the worm's mouth, like getting swallowed down. And it's pretty funny. It's kind of like, um, what you might call it, the plant. Audrey. Audrey, too. Audrey, like Audrey, too. Audrey. Yeah. And it's just, it just, it doesn't fully bite on him, just sucks his hair off, which is like so close. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so he's, he's recovering from that, but Barbara Crampton, uh, this, uh, awakens some kind of repressed sexual, uh, uh, energy in her because she comes into the, the red room and finds the leather cabinet and starts, uh, fondling the, yeah. Smelling the leather gloves and yeah. feeling them. Yeah, before getting into her bondage gear, uh, <laughs> again, brave, brave <laughs> actress. But uh, brave you know, cast, we yeah. saw what she did in uh, in Reanimator, so I mean, I guess she's game for this kind of stuff, and she must trust Stuart Gordon. Uh, <laughs> so she tries to basically rape uh, Tillingast while he's asleep, uh, <laughs> and it's interrupted by Ken Foray, who is able to resist her feminine wiles and you know turn around to a mirror and say, "Look at what is this? Who you are?" breaks the spell and uh yeah then i think the resonator powers up by itself at this point right yeah mm-hmm. then he starts to <clears throat> learn how to turn it on himself yeah you're beyond. saying uh pretorius can turn it on yes. from from beyond i think that's when they said it right he's learned how to yes, turn it on it. from beyond um <laughs> from beyond yeah <laughs> I can't remember what happened in that scene because I, I, I'm trying. I, I don't want to jump ahead to like the uh, you know people bursting out of other people and uh, heads biting the skin off of other heads. And <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Let's just go there. Faces pulling it's, apart from other faces and the one stringy. of the most amazing like five minutes I've seen in a while. And there was like, like a weird dinosaur that- type body thing for a while there. Yeah, what's that, that all about? Yeah, the one that looked like it was humping itself. The one that like like, tried to walk and like collapsed. Oh yeah, and then it's like Jeffrey Combs is like inside having a fist fight with somebody, (laughs) and you can see it. I mean, and he's popping out like, "Get away!" And then he gets pulled back in (laughs) by another hand or some shit. What he he popped out? It reminded me of when Jim Carrey comes out of the rhinoceros and Ace Ventura. Yeah, 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 it totally looked like that. Yeah, it's amazing. (laughs) But at first, you just see like fingertips and it. At, for a second there it looked like toes and I was like oh if this is going to be a long foot shot I'm out I'm coming out of the mouth yeah out of the guy's yeah. mouth yeah and then I was relieved that it was hands I was like oh thank <laughs> god because I was like there's enough weird sex shit in this movie it wouldn't surprise me if we're doing foot stuff now <laughs> I wouldn't yeah be surprised either but then they start like the whole thing starts boiling down to the essentials and so uh, Praetorian's face and and uh, uh, Jeffrey Combs' face are the only things left and then they start biting each other's faces and pulling their skin off, which is just like that's a great way. Just like I can't fight you, and I'm gonna fucking bite you to death. It's so <laughs> like weird. It's so weird, but funny. It's so like weird. I it was like a lot. Yeah. it was like a cross between the thing and the blob and Slither. It was like yeah. a yeah. weird. I think Slither uh, is yeah, you know, like, it's indebted Slither. to this movie. Yeah, this yeah, is like Night is. of the Creeps. I mean, that's uh, I think that's why I like Slither so much. It's like it saw these '80s movies. And that's like the closest thing, you know, to this type of movie that yeah, we've had in right. a very long time. I know, like, The Void tried to do something like that, but it, I it didn't think it was all that successful. It, it missed the well, fun of this, you know. It's a yeah. grimmer uh, movie, but, um, but then so we then the movie the second half of it right Ken Foray uh, dies after making the, that awesome uh, meal that he cooks for them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I have to put this out there, listeners. If you've seen this movie and you know what scene we're talking about when he cooks them dinner, if you have any idea what the fuck that is in that pot, please let us know because we're uh, we all thought it was different. Things. Yeah, it looks. I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, I thought it was biscuits on top of stew. Yeah, yeah, because there's it was carrots in there and, and there's yeah. gravy, yeah, so it could be biscuits and we gravy. We spent a lot of time looking at it. Like, it's not biscuits and gravy, though. It's a stew. Those could be biscuits, but it's like they're baked on top of a huge. stew. Yeah. I think it's just but biscuits it's, and stew. You yeah. think so? Those biscuits were fucking huge, dude. They were huge. <laughs> they were like baseball at first, size. At yeah. First, 
at first I thought it was like little heads of cauliflower because they were just so yeah. big. And then I was like, what the fuck is that? Mm-hmm. Like, is it a dumpling? I don't know. I don't know. We got to find out. If somebody knows, please uh, write yeah. to us in, in, on our social media. We'll tell you how to get there later. Um, mm-hmm. But the... Uh, so the the second half, so he dies because he sa- he tries to save them from uh, they're being attacked by a cocoa crispies I think from from beyond. <laughs> oh yeah, there's like a storm of cocoa uh, crispies. This was gross. And then uh, it was like some sort of bug, eating, like flesh eating yeah. cocoa crispies. Yeah. And then he yeah. attracts them with light, but then he throws the, the flashlight and it accidentally points back at him. And he's like, oh, no. And then they attack him and eat his <laughs> arms and legs off. So he's just laying there. To, he's got the little stumpy legs. And, oh, this, so. is, this is <laughs> wonderful. Um, a reminder <laughs> of other such movies is Return of the Living Dead 3, a Brian Yosna directed movie. Uh-huh. Seems very similar. <laughs> Gotta love it. Yeah. With his head, his head is like die. regular, but then his his <laughs> arms are just gooey, and it is wonderful. Yeah, because they took him down to the bone, right? It's just the bone, yeah. with like some flesh on him. It's just bone and jersey. Yeah, I was disappointed <laughs> that uh, he got such a kind of arbitrary, was well, felt arbitrary send off at that point in the movie because right. I liked his character, but it's I know, like that felt like such a such a bullshit death to me. Yeah, but I suppose <laughs> that it serves to put. Um, uh, Kathleen, the Kathleen, what was her name? Kathleen Michaels. Catherine. Catherine Michaels, on the hot seat, right? Because now she's responsible for a man's death. Uh, she's also, you know, because of her single-minded obsession with this device, she's caused uh, Crawford to lose his mind. Uh, she just kill the dude, and so then she's going to get electroshock therapy at the hospital because then she becomes under the ward of, uh, you know, the the nurse or the doctor in there uh who's like you know it's like now you're under my care what do we prescribe electroshock therapy you know like you do <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. revenge that's right you defied me for the last time so she's the nurse ratchet of this uh situation crawford wakes up in the hospital uh with a newfound desire to uh hungry yeah i mean but what's he hungry for well he tries to eat a gob of spinach which was gross um, but then it got grosser because he found a lab with some, some bits and pieces in it and some buckets. He tried to snack on those. He found them to be quite delicious. But then the nurse came in and was like, hey, you're eating brains. You're going to get sick. And he decides he needs fresh brains. And he sucks them out through her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. The sound effect is the grossest thing. It's so gross! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I like the way he sucks the eyeball out, spits that out on the floor, and then yeah, goes yep. in and sucks her brain Don't out through her part. eye socket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like... <laughs> He's all, gross. he's all covered with his he, shit coming oh, out of his you think mouth. He's, you think he su- sucks up the nerve attached to it? Like spaghetti? Yeah. Just- yeah, 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 yeah. Probably. So then, <laughs> right, because uh, uh, um, Catherine, she gets loose, right, from uh, the electroshock because they have to deal with Crawford. So she's being some attendant over the head, steals a van, goes back to the house because she is going to blow up the resonator with a couple sticks of dynamite. That she uh, gets it. The he found so them on the ambulance. Every, yeah, everyone in the eighties just knew how to make dynamite bombs, right? Yeah. It sure seems like that not, way. I'm like, is it only just because all you need is like wires and a thing and, and a, a timer? And, yeah. She's a doctor, right? So they probably teach you that in med school. Clearly, yeah, she knows what okay. explodes. Sure, yeah, where to find dynamite when you need it? You know, because I mean, right, where would know. I go for dynamite if I needed it in a pinch? I got to blow up this, uh, you know, crazy mad scientist machine right now tonight. I know an island that's got a pirate ship on it. There you go. Well, uh, Crawford, of course, kills a couple of people. This is where, like, Crawford kind of turns. He becomes the monster of the movie, right? I mean, not like um, it's kind of a Jekyll and Hyde thing. Not even. I, it's like when the when the little thing, when he becomes, uh, uh, I was going to say aroused, but when when the pineal gland stalk. Well, you've said it. <laughs> pops so just keep going behind. with it. <laughs> when it, uh, now engorged, pops out of the front of his head. Uh, he, uh, I like how you thought that was better. Yeah. He kills a couple of, uh, people sucks on their brains. And then when it retracts, then he feels bad about it. Right. He's like, Oh, what? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. You know, I was overcome by this, you know, uh, thing. Right. 
And uh, so he follows her out to the house for this is where the final big showdown is going to take place uh, because he wants to uh, well suck her brain. I guess he loves her, right? This is a, it's a touching love story. They've been okay. loves her. I love you, Catherine. Brain. Sure. Yeah, because they're both going to what was uh, Pretorius was, you know, he got into a whole kind of all these bad guys in these movies and they get into this kind of like lofty pinhead like speeches. Wishmaster did it last week where, uh, you know, she will be. Her bra- her mind will join with my mind. My mind will be in hers, and it's the most sensual experience of, you know. Um, Which that confirms that Demolition Man is right about future sex. Then, <laughs> Demolition Man, it's all about the brain waves passing to each other. That's right. Well, he's going to actually make you like into like they're going to be one thing, a globule. Of some kind of. Oh, uh, I don't want to be a globule. <laughs> that uh, doesn't shared, sound fun at all. Shared globules, globulism. What was there? It was another great line too. It's like I feel like uh, the guy who invented the electron microscope and Ken Forey is like, yeah, but he wasn't down there with the amoeba, you know? Right, right. We <laughs> discovered the amoeba. Yeah, but he wasn't down there with it. That was the buddy cop part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After, like breakfast table that I like. I'm like, I want more yeah. of this. I like their, them being at odds with all that stuff. Yeah, because she's very because Barbara Crampton is very buttoned up, hair tight, bun glasses like scientist, and she plays it very well in this movie. I think. Um, but yeah, that whole that uh, the uh, chemistry between the characters at, at that part is is very funny because at that point, uh, Jeffrey Combs is just very his very paranoid, shaky self, which he does very well. But it's it's uh, yeah, it's funny at parts in this movie. Yeah, and I mean, I was laughing hysterically through the end, but probably for other reasons because it was just so giddy by all the crazy makeup effects, this nuts, so <laughs> shit that was happening. Um, but the. Uh, he so he ties her up in the red room, right? The resonator, I can't remember if it turns on by itself. Yeah, it does, right? It mm-hmm. turns on by itself because Pretorius is still there, still trying to get uh Crawford, who's becoming so I think he's like at, at first he's like, Crawford, you're becoming something that, you know, has an ever a being that's never existed before on this planet because Crawford's still physical. He's on the human side, right? Uh, Tilling, or, uh, sorry, uh, Pretorius is on. The, he's in the from beyond, and uh, yeah, then he uh, he comes back to try and claim uh, Crawford, bring him over to the other side, and bites his head, and twists it completely around, and bites it off. Um, I was kind of surprised. I thought this was the end of Jeffrey Combs at this point. Yeah, but, but not, no, not when you can be crawling out of other people, other characters. Yeah, didn't see yeah. that coming through their mouth. Didn't, and then didn't see it coming. Getting sucked didn't back either. in, and then the other guy's head comes out, and then like Jeffrey Combs fights his way out of the guy's stomach. Uh, oh, there uh, we missed a great uh, scene that like that one actually got me. Like I have a pretty strong stomach, but I think it was when she was tied up in the red room. And he was going to uh, eat her brain, right? And the stalk comes out of his head, and she fucking bites it off between ah! her teeth. <laughs> no. <laughs> she just and grabs onto that little fucker. And <laughs> She's even, like, horrified to do it. Like, she looks so disgusted by, like, having to do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know, especially because, I mean, us as viewers this whole time during the movie were like, oh, that's a penis coming out of his head. And then she fucking bites it. <laughs> Bites and tears it. Oh, it's just uh, like, oh, oh. I'm like, who? This is brain damage of some kind. Like, how is this guy still alive? You know, there's not more blood. Like, you're not dying from blood I mean, loss. Not, like, okay, John Bobbitt survived. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, some might say he's thriving because he went on to have like a pretty prolific porn career after that. So that's true. Mm. Um, that's well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, she so the the two guys fighting eventually become like this bit of you know I mean yeah they reduce themselves to uh, worms snapping at each other. Yeah. She jumps out the window as the whole fucking building explodes. She lands on her knees or something, and her kneecaps are fucking hanging out. They're like, like out, dude. I saw that. Like, oh, whoa. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Usually oh, you don't see that happen. Usually, like no. your hero- heroine <laughs> jumps out a window, she's fine. It was two stories up. It would make sense that she broke the fuck oh, out. Can of you her- imagine that happen? Can you imagine your kneecap uh, just being out? Like uh, the whole- that got me. Yeah, 
and the lady from across the street with the dog who started the movie by investigating the strange lights and noises that were going on. They found, you know, the dead guy at the beginning of the movie. Uh, she comes over with her dog with the dog was a bunny the dog. Bunny. And uh, she's asking, you know, like, and all the neighbors are there. I like that. There's like, you know, it looks like there's no fucking houses anywhere near this one house. But sure enough, all the neighbors show up. And she's asking Barbara Crampton what happened. It it ate him. And then Barbara Crampton gives a pretty goddamn convincing, like, she has gone mad laugh yes. cry thing that ends the movie. <laughs> pretty disturbing yeah. uh, final good. note. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, she's Surprise. really good. It's like, I think this is, um, you know, I mean, I can't say that I've seen all of Barbara Crampton's stuff, but... Uh, I appreciate that after, you know, the role in Reanimator, she got to, you know, carry this one. You know, I mean, this is like her big leading role, I think, maybe of her career. Um, I don't know. I thought she was pretty. Yeah, I liked her. She did good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was better than I thought she would be, to be honest. And she, and she covered a lot of ground, I think, because she had to do a lot of shit in this mm. movie. Yeah, which is always, I think, you know, that's, uh, you know, actors, I think they love that, you know, when they have that opportunity, you know, it's like, oh, this is a part that, you know, covers all these different ranges of emotions and you get to play different sides of, you know, the character unleashed by the uh, mad scientist shit. Yeah. Did we forget really? anything? It feels like so much fucking happened as far as especially the gore and the goo. Um, oh, uh, I, uh, there was one scene that I really liked. Well, two scenes I really liked. Uh, when Ken Fareed jumps on the back of the giant worm, stabbing it with the knife, I'm like, this is like Batista in fucking Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. I was the same He's thing. just jumping on the going, ah! <laughs> I'm like, I think, and plus the fact of Slither and everything, I think James Gunn's seen this movie. Oh, yeah. oh he's absolutely seen this movie. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be a favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, listener, what we're going to do, um, we're going to tell you whether we individually like, we've been hedging our bets, right? Well, you know, I like it. Okay. I'm going to give that one up. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to find out what the rest of them thought of it. Uh, after we answer some of your mail and in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I woke up my cat. Igor's always pretty gooey. Yeah. Yeah. He's always got yeah. A normal day. Mm-hmm. Is he, <laughs> yeah, is he from, where's he from? Beyond. Beyond. He's from, <laughs> He's from <laughs> Beyond. Yep. Thank you. Celebrating another good, good Igor bath day. Uh, give it up for Igor. We, we gave him another bath. It's been a year. Um, so, uh, well, we want you to join the Freak Show family. Write in. We'll read your comments on the air. All you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter, if that's your thing. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us directly. Saturday at Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. First of all, I want you to let you know that uh, MF Mad is the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. This is where, you know, uh, we have this rule that if we've uh, covered movies that star a person, if we've covered three of them, uh, we put the name and photo on our wall. It's a huge wall. It, like, wraps around the entire dank, dark basement. Uh, I want to let you know that... um, uh, well, first of all, Stuart Gordon, obviously, he is a four-timer on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame for this Robot Jacks, Castle Freak, and Reanimator. Jeffrey Combs, seventh appearance, uh, Reanimator, wow. Robot Jocks, The Giver, Castle Freak, The Frighteners, and Would You Rather, all covered on this show. Uh, Barbara wow. Crampton's also on her seventh lap. She was in Body Double, Reanimator, Chopping Mall, Puppet Master, Castle Freak, and Lords of Salem. Although her part was cut, but she's briefly in the movie if you look really close. Um, Bunny Summers making her debut tonight on the Saturday Night Free Show Wall of Fame. You're like, who was Bunny Summers? Bunny Summers the was the neighbor. That's right. Yeah. She was also the Swiss woman doctor in Reanimator at the beginning. And she was Mrs. Boone in The Last Starfighter. 
And mm-hmm. we're also welcoming Ken Foray to the Saturday Yay. Night Free Show Wall of well, Fame. Time. <laughs> he was in From Beyond, which we did. He was in the remake of Dawn of the Dead as the televangelist. And he was in Lords of Salem. Uh, Nelson Nascimento writes in about From Beyond. He says, I love this movie. It's in my top five of all time. It played a bit more serious and less tongue in cheek than Reanimator, but no less the equivalent of a classic. I wish they still made movies like this these days. Um, and he says, Ted Sorrell made a great villain under all those prosthetics. Yeah, he was good. Uh, yeah, convincingly creepy. Yeah, he felt like he felt very devilish. Like yeah. he is the devil in human form. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker about our choice said, yay, more Lovecraft. Uh, yay. I, I hear you, Michael. Yay. <laughs> yeah. uh, Teresa Ann says it's a good choice. And Sean Roger quotes the movie saying it ate him, bit off his head like a gingerbread man. <laughs> Great line. Yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Night Killer. Bill Hainer wrote in and said after watching... The movie and or, well, he's saying about a scene uh, that we posted a picture for and the chicken fried chicken pervert scene. So I had to ask myself, has Claudio Fragrasso, the director, ever heard actual human speech before? Seriously, no. it's like all of his characters no. are saying words, but not necessarily to each other. It's like random stream of consciousness babbling in every scene. It's the it's definition beautiful. of word salad, man. Yeah, which was it's wonderful. wonderful. It made it great. <laughs> Peter Gatt says, I watched this on YouTube last night. It's pretty wacky, but I guess the killer early on, he said. Yeah. So there you go. Light mailbag this week, probably because, uh, I don't know, there's stuff going on that may have distracted people, and nobody saw our feed, our posts were all like, blasted by other things that were going mm-hmm. on this week. Uh, but we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of this movie, starting with Holly. We'll do Holly today. <laughs> Allie, what'd you think of Beyond? This was my first viewing of it, like like I said earlier. Um, I I was torn on this one. Um I was actually pretty bored with it half most of the most of the movie. Um I like I said earlier, I'm not a fan of Reanimator. I honestly am just not a fan of uh of, of Mr. Gordon, to be honest. I didn't like Castle Freak. I was gonna say, yeah, Castle yeah. Freak was not good for you. Yeah, I did no. not like that movie. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of Mr. Gordon. I appreciate his work. I appreciate his contributions, and I know why people love it so much. I do understand, um, but there's just something tonally that it doesn't jive with me. I'm just not a fan of his work, and um, like I didn't find this movie funny. I I understand the 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 humor that you guys found in it, but um, it didn't make me laugh. I was kind of bored. I wish it had been more goofy. I wish it'd be more over the top. Like I, I like the buddy cop idea, and I, I would have liked more of uh, uh, Mr. Ken and not in his underwear. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. A lot of it I just didn't care for. However, um, I really appreciate the practical effects of this. It's it's impressive. Um, it's disgusting. It is thoroughly disgusting. And we and we've watched some pretty gross stuff. I've brought a lot of gross stuff on the show, um, but a lot of this was really disgusting. Um, and I think that's why I wanted more comedy. I need the comedy to balance it, so I need it more over the top than this. Like tonally, he's just he's got a very black sense of humor, and normally I like that. I get that, but I feel like I need more of a bright, obvious sense of humor. I need a goofy sense of humor to balance out the grossness. Uh, but that's just me. Um, but I would say I recommend it because it's it's an experience. There's a lot to it that I think um, anyone who yeah, our audience, you know, people like us, they there's a lot that they need to see in this. You know, there's some imagery that I recognize. I've seen it, clips of it, and everything. But to see it actually play out, um, I think it's an experience that people should have. Um, it's not my cup of tea, but. I'll recommend it. It's it's something that I think everyone should see. And I get why it's a favorite. I get why it's a cult classic. Um, so, yeah, you should probably put it in your in your watch list if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, I'll recommend. But I'm still torn. John, what did you think? I think I find myself in sort of the kind of the same ballpark. Um, I like... I like the movie. I love the practical effects, obviously. Anything that's going to yeah, have all that shit absolutely. in it, like, I, I think it's great. Anything that's going to make me cringe, like, bring it on. 
Um, and they really did during this movie. I can't, oh, I can't watch that thing dangle out of his forehead without just being thrown off by it. And anyone trying to touch it bothers me as well. Um, I think the effects are great. Um, I think everybody's doing a pretty good job in this movie. Um, Ken Perret and, and uh, Barbara Crampton is doing very well. I like her in this movie. Um, Jeffrey Combs, I think, is doing pretty good, too. Um, I don't know. I think I like Reanimator better. I think when it comes to these movies, for me, um, I think we... I don't know. It feels like we tend to get a lot of the same stuff from kind of maybe it's just Stuart Gordon movies. Maybe I'm just too, we're getting the same stuff in Stuart Gordon movies, but it's just, I've seen these monsters before. I've seen this gooiness before. Um, I mean, you know, uh, I think, I feel like mouth of madness had, uh, in the mouth of madness had some similar type creatures. I mean, it's, it's it, it, to me at this point, I think I finally gotten to the point where it's just like, um, all right. Uh, uh, HB Lovecraft creature. Like I get it. I understand it. It's not, entirely a new idea to me so it it's i think diminishing returns the more i watch of it right now um it's still good though so i'm still going to recommend it because it's still uh, i thought it's funny in some places the special effects that i think are great everybody's doing a pretty good acting job as well um and barbara crampton kills it i think at the end so yeah it's still a good movie um and i am going to recommend it but i'm like i'm getting kind of used to it or tired of it at this point um so it gets less and less the more of them i watch but this one's still good so i'm gonna recommend from beyond michaela you know they really don't make them like this anymore we don't get body horror movies hardly ever anymore and we definitely don't get movies this gross anymore Mm -hmm. um and if a movie is this gross it's like it's very serious it's like a torture porny type movie and that's not at all the same type of horror and like i really it's a really risky to make a movie like this right like it's really risky to make a movie this fucking weird and i appreciate the dedication to the weirdness and just like going all balls out and being like we're gonna make it as weird as we possibly can up to 11 all the time i can't recall seeing a movie like that that's come out within the past 20 years you know um so i have a lot of respect to it for it for that I agree with a lot of what you're saying, Holly. Like, I don't think Stuart Gordon's really my thing usually either. Um, I, I mean, I haven't seen a lot, but like, I uh, agree with you 100% on Reanimator. Um, and I always felt like it was me, and I majorly missed something with that movie because everyone around me seemed to love it so much. Um, this, I think, is definitely like I like I said, I would pick this over Reanimator any day for a rewatch for sure. Um, and I, I love the like pink gooey body horror of the 80s like i said i would totally watch this as a double feature with the blob i love it and uh like it's just so impressive how revolting the effects are and how they keep changing and yet they just get more and more gross like Mm -hmm. uh, the the Stuart gordon pervert stuff always annoys me every time i see it because he lingers so long on it and that really disrupts the rhythm and the flow of his movies and it's literally it usually doesn't have a a point on the plot at all it's just Mm -hmm. what he wants to do and so that does annoy me and there was a little bit of that in this movie but i still think it was less than reanimator um so that's that was points for this movie for sure but yeah i would definitely recommend it i mean it is definitely one of the grossest movies i've ever seen and we watched a lot of gross stuff like i said it reminded me of society and that's definitely one of the grossest movies i've ever seen too so definitely gotta watch it I don't think we can understate how like sticky and gooey and wet this movie is. Like we really can't <laughs> state enough how gro- how like tactile it is with that stuff. You mm-hmm. definitely got to check it out. You it, you got to see it with your own eyes. Um, Colin, what did you think? Well, yeah, I think it's a uh, there's a Gonzo go for broke, you know, attitude that Stuart Gordon I think took. You know, it's like he's uh, going Hollywood or you know. Hollywood adjacent, right? It's big break in movies. And so it's like, I'm going to do something that puts me on the map. You know, you're going to remember reanimator because every chance that he can, he goes, he pushes it right to that line and then goes past. I mean, just goes shooting past it every time. So then of course that becomes the thing. It's like, well, if I go see a Stuart Gordon movie, you know, that's what I'm expecting that he's going to do. And this is his immediate follow up. So I think he's trying to do the same thing. I think, you know, there, he's trying to shock and titillate and disgust and, you know, it, in extremes, you know, it's all like, wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, but this is ultimately, I think, you know, these are the reasons that we're still talking about his movies is it worked. You know, it's like, because who's talking about Fortress with Christopher Lambert? Anybody? Stuart Gordon's Fortress, the one in the, no? Space Truckers? Come on, everybody saw Space Truckers. No, you remember. Oh, yeah, space Truckers. Huh? Coming hey, soon to the Saturday truckers. Night Freak Show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, um, I think that his first two movies, obviously. And then, you know, it's, I, uh, you know, Dagon, um, it's many, it's many years removed by the time he actually tries to do that one. And he tries to also, you know, push the envelope in a couple of scenes that are, that in that movie, for some reason, I actually, that was where I was like, okay, Stuart, I, I get it. You're going, you know, gratuitously too far. Or, but it's like but he, that's what he's doing here but for some reason it works for me in this movie it's like he's got the uh perfect combination it probably is like you know cast production crew everything i think it's a better directed movie than reanimator it's like you know he's getting better at his craft i mean like i think it's maybe a better crafted movie than reanimator um i think my heart still goes with reanimator just because that was the one that was like you know my exposure to Stuart Gordon and the you know the gonzo fucking crazy shit and I guess the the humor in that one also you know there's quotable lines uh, and Herbert West is just so great but um I don't think the characters are as memorable as as he was you know that that was a great performance with a great you know character in in Reanimator um but I think the same people obviously here do you know, they're just, they're, per it's like, that was why, I guess, you know, uh, Stuart Gordon kept using Jeffrey Combs and, and Barbara Crampton, you know, uh, because I think the three of them, it was just, it, it gelled, you know. Um, yeah, and they obviously they like working with each other. They did enough of these. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, this is one of the, the like I said, the great uh, 80s rubber monster movies one of the great 80s mad scientist movies uh one of the great you know sci-fi horror movies uh you know like michaela was saying it's like you don't see stuff like this anymore although i'm gonna take that back because um i think you know i i didn't like it as much but i think you should check out color out of space uh because it is gonzo you're like it's just fucking weird for me and we're like yeah and it did you know make get some kind of notice for being just like this crazy fucking movie with nicholas cage as an alpaca farmer because that's weird you know and tommy chong is because no, that's weird stop there that's all i need <laughs> nicholas cage is an alpaca farmer yeah and yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and you get the colored lights and the crazy sounds and i mean it goes like you know what the fuck are we doing you know uh, that would be like the closest, you know, but it misses, I don't, it doesn't have the same sense of fun in, in a lot of ways as, as this one does. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, I think I was kind of late coming around to this movie when I first saw it, you know, I was, I was high on reanimator and I saw this, and I'm like, well, it's not as good as reanimator. And then years later I saw it again and I was like, eh, you know, and it, the more I've seen it, uh, the more I like it. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm in love with this movie now. I mean, it's like, this is one of my favorite. You know, How you know, many times like, do you think you've seen it? Uh, probably five, it might be five or six times, I think now. So on my, I'm on, on the sixth go through, it's like completely in love it with, uh, yeah, with, uh, well, I was before, you know, I was like, that's why I'm bringing it to the Saturday Night Freak Show. So, um, yeah, I would, uh absolutely recommend uh that you check out from beyond just you know i might want to bring the barf bag know what you're getting into because <laughs> it's nuts and gross next week we're going to be watching a movie wait that is a freak show approved i think yeah. so yeah it's all four okay all right it's all four of them so you have to see from beyond um yeah right you have to that's a the rule. <laughs> send us your ticket stubs. Yeah, and and give us your comments on when we're posting the social media this week. Uh, let us know what you thought of the movie. Um, so next week we're watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? Um, this week we knew where our movie came from. Okay, it came from beyond. <laughs> we knew its origin. Sure. But next week we're not going to. Next week we're going to watch of unknown origin. Oh boy. Oh, <laughs> here <it> comes. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Uh-huh. That's it. For some reason, the scene that stands out to That's me it. about that movie is Peter Don't Weller versus a dishwasher. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, Colin. Yeah. All right. So no, no, don't. Colin's like, here, wait, let me spoil. No, I'm not spoiling. No, I was. I'm selective. I know what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm not no, going to ruin no, the movie you for you. you. No, you don't. All the time. No, no, what no, the you, don't. Talking about. you spoil everything. No. Dishwasher. Wait till next week. All right. So it's uh, of unknown origin next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, directed by uh, George P. Cosmatos, wasn't it? I believe so. I think it was director of uh, Leviathan and what was the other movie? Tombstone, uh, Cobra. Cobra. Cobra Rambo Two. Uh, the Christmas classic, Cobra. That's right. Why are we talking about this now? Next week. All right, that's coming up next week. <laughs> and until then, the basement is going dark.